Hey everybody, another Data Studio video here. Um, so in my last video, or maybe you didn't watch it, who cares? Uh, my last video was about um, taking multiple choice grid questions. Uh, let me show you what I have here. Multiple choice grid questions like this and making a really nice display in Looker Studio, Data Studio. I'll always call it Data Studio, I think. I'm, I'm bad at changing the name, but it's technically Looker Studio. Um, and now I'm looking at a new uh, question, which is the multi-select question. So people could pick as many of these options as they would like. Um, all right, so uh, this graph is nice in Google Forms. The problem with these graphs, besides the fact that you have to like either copy and paste them and they're static or whatever, or somebody has to be a collaborator, is there's no really great way to filter, right? So this graph looks really nice. This is kind of the graph I want. It's actually exactly the graph I want. I want this graph, um, but I want to be able to filter it. So how do I do that, right? Uh, so let's jump into my data studio. I thought I had a really good way to do this, and I and I didn't. So in my last video, I was like, yeah, it's not a big deal. And then I realized, like, oh, the graph isn't what I like. Uh, so this is called the student tech skills checklist. Just if you're wondering, I sent out a survey to our entire district about all different types of instructional technology things, professional development, what tool, technology tools they like, what they don't like, all these types of things, right? And um, there's a lot of questions. So the spreadsheet is very long, uh, BZ. So we've got a lot of columns here. Um, and I've used, I've created a, a lot of different tabs using, because um, I have a lot of multiple choice grid, but I actually don't need to do anything on uh, on my spreadsheet. I can actually do it all through Looker Studio. All right. So this is what the graph will look like at some point. Um, if I wanted to, I could use some uh, identifier. I could create a column. And maybe there's another way to do this. I would love, if you have advice on what I'm doing, please help me. I am far from an expert. I'm going to move myself actually over here. I'm far from an expert on any of this, but um, I'm willing to try. So uh, right now I just have it in my grade bands um, and different columns. So I'm going to show you how to make a graph like this based on a multi-select. So the problem is if I go to student tech skills checklist and I bring that over and I change that to a, I want it to be a bar chart. All right, and then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let me move this one down for now. I'm going to drag this all the way across the screen so you can kind of see it better. Okay, click off of that, sort, and I'm going to drag this over. You can see that each column is actually uh, the number of times people select those exact things. So um, 87 people selected these three, ability to use email, ability to use Doc Slides Drive, Navigate Google Classroom. And you can see uh, 70 people chose just Doc Slide Drive, Google Classroom. What I'd rather have is how many people selected Google Classroom at all? How many people selected Doc Slides Drive at all? Which is what this graph is telling me. 87% of people, almost 87% of people saying students are proficient at navigating Google Classroom. That's the information and that's helpful. I don't know how to do that just here and using just this setup. If there is a way, I would love to know how, but I don't know how. So um, I'm going to show you the formula uh, that I'm going to use to create new fields. Uh, I have to copy and paste it because I am far from a uh, programmer. And then um, once I show you that, you you will see how. Uh, you can you can use that to leverage what you're doing. All right, so and then I'll pause, I'll create them all, and then I'll come back and make the graph because I don't want you to watch me make a bunch of these things. And I don't have really sophisticating editing software to like fast forward and voice over it. Okay, so we'll just do it this way. All right, so I'm going to show you an old example because I've already done this one time. All right, so you have to create these new fields. I call this one student achievement, and you're going to use uh, regular expressions. And you're going to filter through the answers. 
And then you're going to choose some unique word that's part of the answer. So like I can use email. Uh, and then you're going to count them if this is in. So it's just saying when your expression contains the word achieve, give me a one, otherwise give me a zero and and count them all the way up through all of the answers to this question. All right, so I'm going to actually copy this. I'll put this in the description as well. So you can just copy this directly from the description. Um, and OK, so I can actually make a new field from here if I want to. But if you are starting from scratch, you'll just start and click Add Field. Uh, I'm going to call this I actually like numbering these. I didn't do it in my last one, and I'm paying for it right now when trying to sort. So student email is what I'm going to call this one. I'm going to paste this, and now I have to do a little bit of adjusting here because the field that I want, move myself again. The field that I want is called the student tech skills checklist. It's easier for me to type and for, find, but here are all your fields. You can just add it in if you, if you don't have that many. And then I want the word email. I do believe that that is case sensitive. And there are some tricks to getting it not case sensitive. I haven't been super successful. I was more successful doing that on Google Sheets than I am in this editor. Um, again, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I actually know that, uh, that would be really helpful. I tried like putting lower around here to make them all lowercase. And anyways, I just have ended up matching the case because they had to select it, right? So emails all lowercase right there. So I just matched the case and that should work fine. So I'm going to hit save and I'm going to click done. And now in my responses field at the top, there should be student email. And all I'm going to do to check to make sure this is correct is I'm just going to drag it over. It's going to create a scorecard. It says 248 people responded <coughs> to email. And so I'm just going to go back to my form and check 248. So that was calculated correctly. So I need to do it now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. I'm going to just duplicate that formula, find a new unique word. So the next one I can just do docs with capital D. The next one could be the word reliable. The next one could be problems, classroom, device, none, right? Like you just pick one word that's unique in that phrase. You don't have to use the whole phrase. Uh, to me, that's easier. And uh, let me make all those real quick, and then I'll get right back to you. All right, I'm back. All right, so you can see across my screen here, I have all seven of them. I'm not going to keep them as scorecards. Now, you could style these scorecards and make them maybe useful. You can change the way that that's written right there. So ability to use email would be how I would actually write it. Uh, you just want to name the field something that's easy for you to sort by. So that's why um, I have it sorted that way. But, you know, if you do that and then put a little border, let me just show you how I style things. Just so you, if you like my style of things. Um, so I, I already have like uh, Open Sans as my default here. Uh, I'd probably make this a little bit bigger. Maybe not too big, but uh, I get rid of the padding. Um, typically because the padding interferes with my ability to get it the exact size I want. All right. And then I usually hide chart header. I use a border um, rounded corner and I add a border shadow and that's how I get that kind of like um, depth without actually adding any color to it. You could add color if you wanted. I like this kind of monochrome look. That's how all my buttons are made. This one actually, it has a little depth to it, I guess. Um, if I'm Sometimes I'll put a border around it if I'd like. So that's kind of how I make them. It just kind of looks a little bit more finished than that, right? So you could do that, and then when you sort here, I sort by a certain building, it will change that, which is really nice. Uh, whereas you can see here, these are not that useful, right? So we're actually going to delete this graph now because this graph is not useful. Um, the only useful thing is seeing the words, but I can just pull that from my Google form if I need to. Okay, and I'll I'll talk about how I'm going to style this. I'm still playing around with that because like this one, I don't love how it's styled. Still, hard to read. 
So I need to do a little bit with that. All right, so now that I have all of these, I need to build a graph. So you need to choose a dimension, right? And so the dimension that I'm choosing um, is my grade band. Now, I have done this in the past where my dimension is all people, and it's just a generic, like, everybody has the same value, right? And then they all show up as a single column, uh, which could be helpful if you want it that way. Um, but for the time being, what, what, what am I looking for? Grade band? So you can see there's a lot going on here, but I'm going to bring this one over. What grade band do you teach? Okay. I'm going to change this to a bar chart because I want it to go this way. And then I'm going to add my metrics in are going to be all of these things that I just created. Student email, student docs. You can see it's populating different bars, right? That's awesome. Four, five. Oops, I already did five. Six and seven. So now, again, uh, I'm going to delete these real quick because I'm not going to use those. But this is how I check my work, right? I check these against my form. Um, now I have this graph. It's 100% filterable by all my filters above. I can actually see what's going on here. The colors are beautiful. Um, and I'm kind of thinking, I've used this trick before where uh, I, use, I, I use a table. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you an example. But I kind of want like an explanation of each one of these. So in the style part, I can actually hide. Um, so this is my theme. So that's why the colors are coming over so nice without me doing anything. That's my theme. Um, Thinking about hiding the legend here, you still could see it if you highlight over it. It says student email, student docs. And think about making like a separate legend down here with the colors uh, that would kind of help people identify what part is what, right? So like you see none is way higher in pre-K4 than it is up here in grades 9 through 12, 5 through 8. Uh, I can, I've also kind of toyed with playing with this side of things. I just don't want this to get too messy. But if you wanted this all in a singular graph, like the Google form, let me bring that back over. See how it's just a singular graph with those? I haven't figured out how to get all of those on the um, on the axis because they're all metrics right now. Whoops. So I haven't quite figured out all of it. But this is a workable spot, right? And then if I go to a building, the nice thing about it, if I go to a building, so let me go to a building with a lot of answers. It's going to make that graph really readable because they're only 9 through 12, right? And so regardless, that's a really easy graph to read. I don't know if I want the words over here. I don't know if it adds anything to it. If it does, then I need to figure that out. Maybe that's like a, maybe that's like a uh, drill, drill down to me. I'm not sure. To be honest, I'm not sure. But here we are. This is where I'm at, right? So... Uh, these are my adventures in Data Studio um, using regular expressions to create these kind of graphs. I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, my last thing I wanted to show you. Sorry, there's a lot of graphs on here. Maybe I'll do a run through of this whole thing when I'm done. So sometimes I get these graphs and I'm still working on the exact um, organization of it all, but at least I have the, the kind of the shell. So let me zoom in here. All right, so each one of these bars has a long phrase associated with it. So you couldn't have it running down. You, there was no way to display all of that text, right? Um, and so instead, I created a filter here. Sometimes it does not play well when I'm... Let me ungroup this and maybe I'll be able to show you. Okay, so you can select one, and that phrase shows up at the bottom now, but really what that is is that's a table. All right, so that's a table of all the answers here. So let me clear that out. 
and you can see you could actually scroll this right now if you wanted to which is fine i don't care if people scroll it right this doesn't apply teachers are excited about learning new ways doesn't actually apply to this graph and i've actually done it in the past where the first uh, row of the table is actually a blank row and so nothing shows up and then when you filter it down it shows up but um I'm not that worried about it this time. <laughs> Perfection is is a is a is an animal, so I, I won't worry about it. But yeah, this is a nice little hack that I've kind of stumbled upon. Now, you can see these don't uh, go in the order I want them to, and I think it's because I have to n numerically number them, and then I'll have to change the the words that you see. This is crazy. There's no way anybody's getting anything from this video, but hey. I'm going to post it anyways because maybe you learned something from the regular expression. Uh, maybe I'll finally get this uh, Data Studio done. But yeah, we're getting there, right? We're getting there. You, the first page is nice. Um, filters are, are locked. They're groups, so they only filter that specific graph. These are uh, page level filters, so they'll filter <coughs> the entire page. Um, this page is close, but not quite there. This page is really close. I just need to get this uh, this question, which types of PD would be beneficial to you in the spot, but uh, this one's also all done. And you can filter it by each device. Uh, so that's nice, I like that one. Uh, let's see where we're at here. Oh, yikes, I haven't even started. And then here, we're getting there. So anyways, uh, thanks for coming on the journey with me. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you can teach me something as well. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon.